This video is sponsored by DistroKid. You want the cleanest professional sounding vocals. You want to avoid this. You're using the compressor wrong. If it's, it's gonna just tighten the vocal even more. Hi, I'm Ash. This is how you make your vocal sound amazing in Ableton. I'm just gonna start you off real simple with the best basic chain. We have our vocal here. This is what it sounds like without anything on it. very first thing you want to do is make sure that your vocal is tuned. I use Waves Lite. There's tons of tuning plugins out there. Straight up! Normally, if you just get it off splice, it'll already be tuned. So let's just move right into the basic vocal chain. First thing we're gonna do is add EQ8. And then on the first band, we're gonna set it to this setting. So the steepest roll off. EQ it to around 60, 70 Hertz-ish to get rid of all of the low end from your microphone. I ran away from you. Next thing we're gonna do is we'll use a shelf EQ. What we're trying to do is boost the highs, but instead of raising up the highs, we're gonna lower everything else. And this just helps with our gain reduction. It just helps in the mixing process. And then we make up for that with the gain instead. And as always, we're looking right here at this meter, making sure that we're not clipping because we're gonna be adding way more effects after this. And that's a good practice to have. If I was to do it the other way and boost it like this, I ran away from you. This is a really, really extreme example, but this happens if you have stacks and stacks and stacks of effects on and you're not paying attention to this and you're like boosting the EQ like that. This is great for if you're doing more sound design stuff, but if we're doing basic vocal processing, vocals are really, really important to not have distortion. If you want the cleanest professional sounding vocals, you want to avoid distortion as much as possible. We do the reverse EQ. Next thing we want to do is add a compressor. So you can use Ableton stock, but for all of my vocals, I've always used this Waves plugin called V-Comp. It's a lot warmer. All I'm essentially doing is adding light compression so that the volume of the vocal stays even. And the best way to kind of see how it gets affected is to aim for about minus six dB gain reduction. That means as your sound is playing back, the compressor is reducing your vocals volume to minus six dB. Ran away from you. Then you just use the gain or output to just make up for it. Then it'll sound more even. If any of this is confusing or you have questions, come hang out on Twitch. I'm live every Monday. We chill, I listen to your tunes, answer questions. It's a pretty good time. As I said, you can do this with the built-in compressor. Aim for that minus six. And then the other trick you wanna do is to turn makeup gain off, set the output yourself. Compressor police, compressor police. Spoiler alert, it's me. I'm the compressor police because you're using the compressor wrong if it's making your sound louder. When you add compression, it makes your sound louder. That's why we turn off the makeup gain. Now look how far I've gone. You shared some secrets that I'd hope. You're doing it right if the gain reduction is still happening, but when you bypass or flip the compressor on and off, you're not noticing a volume difference. That means you are properly compressing the sound, the volume is even, and your listeners are gonna love you, and it's gonna save you all the headache when trying to mix these in later. And that applies to anything you're compressing. It doesn't just have to be vocals. Top tips for you. And it's Ash again with another top tip, but hang on. Hold on, friend. Before you even try this basic vocal chain out, make sure you have a fantastic recording. You need to spend more time on the recording than you do the processing. In other words, one hour spent getting a great recording will save you five hours in mixing. So think about that next time. But what if you can't sing? That's all right. There's lots of great places to find singers. You can try TikTok, Instagram, Reddit. And when you have a great sounding vocal, it helps you get that much closer to songs that you can release. Oh, woo! What up, bro? You say you're ready to release? You again? You said you're ready to release, but there's a big problem. Uh, there, there is? Yes. Everybody gets credit. Everybody gets paid. Dude, okay, this song is not another vocalist. This is me. DistroKid has got a feature called Teams. 
You know what you can do? You can add unlimited collaborators okay, just, to just any ignore track. Me then. That's fine. No matter who works on it, everybody gets credit. Everybody gets paid. Okay, what's even the best way to get paid? As long as they have a DistroKid account. I only have one DistroKid account. It's not like... Even if they don't, they'll get 50% off. Okay, but what if something changes, you know? Like, someone gets a... No sweat. You can change the split anytime. That means split it any way you want, like a big old pizza. Okay, and what if we're kind of get close to release and buddy all of a sudden ghosts? Then what? Huh? Don't even worry about that either. Your release doesn't get delayed. Not at all. If your collaborator is a slow to sign up. Just hold the money until uh, until they do. Well, dang. Sounds great. But, you know, I got to finish this song first still. Go get 7% off with the VIP link. Boom. There it is. Boom. And we have Thank it. Thank you. Thank you, good night! We also need a bit Thanks, of OTT Distro on this bad boy, but this OTT is gonna be very, very subtle. And it's gonna just tighten the vocal even more. So putting an OTT and setting it to about 10% tends to add a bit more brightness to the vocal as well. And I should have crashed the car. That's without. And I should have crashed the car. So it's really, really small tiny, subtle effects. Now that we have this vocal sounding super fresh, we can try some different effects. These are effects that are more sound design-y and fun. So once you have that basic chain on, you can go wild and kind of get crazy. First one I want to show you is the octave stack. So in Ableton, we have all of these cool different warp modes. And I want you to turn on warp and then go over to Complex Pro. Next, when you transpose it, you transpose it down, 12 semitones. And I should have cried. Don't worry about how raw that sounds. But when you turn formants down, you get this like deep effect. I should have cried. And when you stack it with a regular vocal, I have you get an effect like that. We can do it with all of these as well. So you make a new audio track, Complex Pro. Transpose it down. You can add a really cool metallic effect onto the vocal using Ableton's delay stock plugin. So if you put delay on and you make sure it's set to time, and then the more you turn the feedback up, the more metallic it ends up sounding. It's the combination of short time and high feedback. Neat, right? And you can experiment with those knobs. You can automate it. Things get crazy when you start adding these types of effect. The key is though, to take these effects and combine them. Use them in smart ways so that they enhance the vocal itself. But hold up, if you're someone who wants to learn how to actually record the vocals properly, I've got a really special vocal recording tutorial up on my Patreon, and you can go over there and watch that. Speaking of Patreon, I want to give a quick shout out to the true homies. Thank you so, so much. Actually, I want to give you a free tutorial about the best way to add reverb to vocals, and the link to that is just below. If you like what I'm doing, if you learned something today, if free is more your style, please like and subscribe. Every little bit helps. That's gonna to be it for me today. Nice, quick, simple video. Hope you picked up some tips. I'll catch y'all later. Peace.